and it gives me great pleasure in welcoming to the podium the Honorable Prime Minister, Rosebel Skerritt, to address us. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let me first of all recognize the presence of my friend and colleague, Honorable Gloria Schillingford, Minister for Community Development and Social, um, Social Affairs and Gender Affairs. Let me also recognize the Chairman and Board of the uh, Grotto Home for the Homeless, Community Hostels, Inc., uh, the manager and members of staff, and of course the media present and the benefactors of the Grotto Home. I want to, to say that the, the Grotto Home is fortunate to have uh, a very concerned and caring group of men and women at the helm of the Grotto Home. Um, I know Auntie Angie, or I call her Auntie Angie and, and ASP Irish, they would come to my home very early in the morning to say that the Grotto Home needs um, 10,000 or 5,000 right away uh, to purchase certain items. And I get, get calls from them and text messages on a regular basis. Um, and it, it speaks to the deep concern for the less fortunate in the country. I also want to especially recognize uh, Mr. Green from Green's Wholesale, who has been an exceptional benefactor of, um, of, of Grotto Home. So if you buy more from Green's Wholesale, he'll be able to give more to the Grotto Home. So I urge all of you, to all of us, to, to buy more from Green's Wholesale so that he can give more to the Grotto Home. And he's been a great benefactor. I want to say that the, the government is, is totally committed to continue to be a partner uh, to the Grotto Home uh, because we believe that all of us have a responsibility to the less fortunate. And this is why if you have looked at the government's programs, we have focused heavily on assisting the less fortunate in our country because we do not only have a responsibility as leaders to the less fortunate, but we also have a Christian responsibility, a biblical responsibility to care for the less fortunate among us. And a country will be judged not only by the high-rise buildings and the improvement to the physical infrastructure, but it will be judged by how well you can take care or you've been taking care of the less fortunate in our country. And this is why we have instituted the SUK program this is why we have instituted the assistance to the school children to attend school, whether it's transportation or the school transfer grant. This is why we have had social housing, providing free homes and repairs to homes of less fortunate across the length and breadth of Dominica. And, and a number of other programs that we have instituted, um, social programs, social safety net programs to assist the less fortunate. It has been unfortunate that we have been criticized by some quarters in society for reaching out to the less fortunate. People have characterized them as beggars. People have characterized them as being greedy. But at the end of the day, we will all have to answer to our maker if we believe that, there, if we believe that there's a maker. And I'm sure one of the questions that we ask is how well have we taken care of our neighbor? Have we been our neighbor's keeper? Because none of us know. None of us know on this, in this life what the future holds for us. We want to be at a particular point in life, in the future. But none of us except the maker knows what tomorrow will bring for us. And some of us may very well find, some of us in this country may very well find ourselves as residents of the Grotto Home, residents of the infirm, and how, what type of care would we want at the infirmary? What type of care would we want at the Grotto Home? And that is something that we have to be mindful of. And when we instituted the SUK program, I said to the Minister of Social Services that we need people who care about people genuinely. We're not going to give you a job. We need to go and find out how well you're taking care of your children, your parents, and your grandparents. And based on that, that's how you'll get employed under the SUK program. Because we have to ensure that we care for the elderly. And I give a commitment to the less fortunate. As long as I'm the leader of this country, they will be always cared for by this government because we have a responsibility. And notwithstanding how difficult the economy may be, 
Notwithstanding the fact that our revenue has dropped, like every other country in the world, we are committed to keeping the safety nets intact. And this is why we have not tampered with any of the social safety nets we've, we've instituted in this country. They all remain intact, properly financed. And I have said publicly that if it means that I have to stop the construction of a road or a piece of infrastructure to finance the social safety net programs, that shall be done. We have been working with the Grotto Home towards the realization of its new home. And I have committed as Prime Minister and Minister of Finance to $120,000 towards the purchase of building materials. And we also have mandated the state prison to use um, labor from there to assist with cutting on the cost of construction for the grotto. I've been told by my staff this morning that we have received $40,000 of building materials so far. I'm saying to you that before the end of the working day, you shall receive an additional $40,000 um, to continue the project. And by next Wednesday, God willing, you will receive the order of $40,000 to complete the 120000 dollars committed um, by the Office of the Prime Minister. We have also, I believe, leased land to you. Yes. Um, 2.7 acres of land, very prime land in a tranquil location um, at a peppercorn rate. Yes. So you are not paying for it, we're not selling it to you, but you have it for $1 a year. One acre, one acre of land, I believe one dollar a year. That's correct? One dollar a year for, for eternity, really, and so forth. Um, and when we bought the land from you to, for the construction of the, of the road, we did, in fact, we paid you more than the value of the land because we wanted to help you. Um, I recall the old debate in the cabinet, we decided to give you more for the land. Um, though the land was originally government land, we gave it to you and it's, we bought back from you and so forth. But it is all part of the, of the country. Um, I know that you receive a subvention plus um, public assistance in the region of about 30 or so thousand dollars, thereabouts and so forth. I've been also told that you have a budget shortfall of about $30,000 annually. I'm giving a commitment here today that we will provide you with additional $30,000 for the next five years um, so that you will not have any difficulty in meeting the operating costs from time to time. So, so, but of course, the maps can be worked out between my staff and your staff. So we're committing, as of from this year, to give you the additional $30,000 um, so that you don't have to come to me um, at my home um, or at my office early morning and tell me you need, you need money here and so on so we can resolve the issue. But the caring for our people, the, 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 the brunt of the responsibility should not fall on the state. And the question is, should we not start having discussions in our country? As other countries have, have, have discussed and taken decisions and instituting a, a levy on our, on our salaries of, of half a percent or one percent that would go into a special fund to help provide for these um, people who need help. Because just two weeks ago, I had to give the infirmary, though we cover the full cost of the oper operation of the infirmary, I had to give the infirmary $70,000 to do some improvements to the facility. And we have to give an additional sum to them. So we just gave them two weeks ago $70,000 from the government. And, but you have people who have family members. And these family members, they have lots of land. They have money in the bank. They receive a, a pension. They receive social security benefits. And these families are not giving the infirmary not $1 of the pension or the money they're getting from Social Security. And I'm saying to them that we're going to change the, that policy, that if you want to come to the infirmary and you're getting a pension or you're getting Social Security, you must sign a legal document assigning that money to the infirmary to take care of your father, your grandfather, your mother, your auntie, or, or yourself. And if you have land, you should sell land or bequeath the land to the infirmary so the infirmary can liquidate it to, to help pay for your maintenance. Because when you come to the infirmary, the infirmary and the government provides 100% care. Doctor's visit must be covered by the infirmary. 
Nurses' visits must be covered by the infirmary. Medication covered by the infirmary. And even when the person dies, the infirmary has to pay to bury that person. It cannot be fair to the state. It cannot be fair to the managers of the infirmary that somebody who has money as small or as big as it is would leave that money in the bank or people, family members would benefit from it and the person who, who worked for that money cannot benefit and enjoy that money. It is not fair and I think I have said to the management of the infirmary to send a recommendation to the board and send me a copy and a copy to the minister so we can discuss it and take decisions on this issue. Because we have as family our first responsibility to take care of our family. The state can assist where we cannot assist. Or where you cannot assist, the state will assist. But we have to, our primary responsibility is to care for the elderly. But I really want to commend the infirm, they are brought to home, because you have done an exceptional job in caring for the less fortunate. An exceptional job. Um, the management and the leadership and the staff, because it is not easy to deal with the residents. It's a, it's a huge challenge. But because of their intrinsic love for service and service to mankind, they are there working and and, and, and laboring. I have my, my dear friend, Nurse Smith, who was, who, who was a nurse for more than 40 plus years. You know, who is there, you go there and she's there working, you know, and helping out and so forth. A number of other people who come there, both as volunteers and, and, and paid staff. And to you, all of us here in the country, wouldn't it be wonderful if we can volunteer a day a week, or two hours a, a week, to go in there, in the business houses, can you send your staff there to help out with something or the other? Whether it is, is to help cook the lunch, or help serve, or help wash the dishes, is something that we may want to, to consider as our contribution to mankind and society. So I, I, I really wanted to be here this morning. This week is a very tight week for me because I am working on the finalization of my budget speech. And um, I, 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 I have to focus on that. Um, because it will be delivered next Wednesday um, in the Parliament, the 23rd, and I need to finalize it by all means um, this week. So, but I wanted to be here to, to lend support to your, to, your, to your efforts and to say to you that you have a committed partner in myself as, as the Prime Minister of the country and the government as a whole. And you can always look to, to us and to me for whatever support you require to care for all people in this country. Because as I said, we never know where we shall end up in life. And that has always to be our guiding principle. Guiding principle. Because life has a funny way of teaching us some lessons. And I am guided by that. And this is why I have always tried to be generous and responsive to the less fortunate in this country. And it's okay for anybody to criticize, criticize me for that, but I believe that I have a Christian and biblical duty to assist. And, and we will continue to be partners. I look forward to the completion of your facility. I think that will address a number of your challenges that you presently have at the, at the um, old um, Dominica Club. But, but you've been able to do an exceptional job under, the, under very trying and difficult circumstances. And it, it all comes on in large measure to a committed board, um, a few committed benefactors, and wonderful staff um, you have at the, at the grotto. So God bless your efforts, and God bless our country, Dominica. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you very much again, Prime Minister, for your commitment, and I'm sure um, we are very satisfied with your contribution over the years.